This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Jennifer! Hi, Richard. How are you? Fabulous. How are you? I'm great now. I get to see you. (laughs) You know, it's just funny how we do this podcast and we don't see each other. We text each other a little bit just prior. And then here we are again in our ongoing search for intelligent life in the universe. (laughs) Whoever heck we're doing. How are you doing? What's going on? I'm doing great. I'm yeah. doing great. Um, it feels like a whole lot of things are going on, but this weekend I get to go to Malibu for the weekend, which is really nice. So I'm kind of excited. Are you going to shred the boo? Or are you going to get out the old surfboard and hop out there and shred some waves? Yeah, of course. Of course. Or are you just shredding a, like at a restaurant? Actually, I'm going there with a girl, two girlfriends of mine. One, it's her birthday, Colby Rebel. It's her birthday. We know Colby. And- Happy birthday, Colby. Yeah, and Lisa Williams is coming in from New York. Oh, my God. Very cool. Lisa's coming yeah. in. Okay. My friend Iris, mm-hmm. you know, my friend Iris is working with her. So she just moved in down the block. So maybe they're going to connect. I don't know. Great. Well, maybe we should. Maybe we should, <laughs> maybe should we, we should have a flip side party. <laughs> right? That's great that she works with Lisa. Lisa's amazing. Yeah, we should. You should invite Lisa to come on our podcast sometime. I think that would be subject good. her to my torturous questions and innuendo. All right. Well, I didn't plan anything. Like we don't. We don't plan anything. So, right. uh, what's going on on the flip side, Luana? I mean, tell us. We haven't seen you in a week or two. Okay, tell so us. Go ahead. Just- showed me something that happened the other night that I was curious about because it was not last night, but the night before there was so much energy that I could see. And it was, you know, and, I'm, and I don't know. I mean, I've always seen it. That's the reason why I do this work. Cause I couldn't ignore it. Like, it's so crazy. Like if I put my hand up, you know what it looks like is if by putting my hand up, it looks like it's in water. You know how, if you put your hand in water, so yeah. like, like light. And uh, there's that photograph on, on the blog, richmartini.com. Whereas a picture of you holding your hand up and it literally looks like you're holding water. Yeah. So that's what, I mean, I was touching it. You could feel the energy, like even when you touch it and like last night it was, or two nights ago, it was crazy. And so I'm like, what is this? Should I be, I'm like, please let me go to sleep. And usually when I ask for that, that's the last thing I remember, which was true. That was the last thing I remembered. (laughs) I'm like, I need to go to sleep. This is crazy town. You know, and they're like, it was, you know, I could see the faces coming towards me and then it disperses. All right. Well, let's ask our pal Luana on the flip side. What's up with that? What's going on, Lou? Is there a surgence or a resurgence or something you want to talk about? She says, first of all, there's nothing for you to fear because every once in a while I'll get in my head, like, are they, you know, and so, oh, she just reminded me of what I did. So what I said to them, I'm like, if you're healing, please heal me and please heal my husband right now, who was uh, my back hurt. You know, I was just like, if there's anything wrong with me, please heal it. I'm sure they can find a lot of things. Um, But my husband has, he was kind of feeling under the weather. I'm like, can you just take care of that? Like work on that. And so I turned it around. I'm like, so let me see what she had to say about that. Because she reminded me, because I, of course, would never remember. It could be healing energy if that's what is needed. It helps to ask. That's interesting. Just And then she shows me just like when we ask our loved ones to be here, you know, that are on yeah. the other side. It's no different than that. Um, kind of the same thing, which is try to put them in your mind ask them to come and help or have a conversation. Is that right? Something like that, Lou? Yes. Um, my dad, I'm like, I asked my dad, was he there? And my dad just came through. He's like, yes, I was there. Hi, Jim. Um, wow. Okay. So I asked him like, if it was you, then why was it so packed? I'm like, is my office like that? Or is it just one spirit to the person that's connected to her? And he just showed me the office being packed. Um, it's not, again, they're calling me down. Like, it's nothing to be worried about. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they all live in our, I mean, whether it's our space, their space, we live together in different dimensions. Well, I guess I've been asked, Luana, is, is this a, a result of a shift in 
Jennifer's consciousness, the world's consciousness, people on the flip side's consciousness. Question. Um, because I've opened this portal of who I am into this work, I've asked them to give me everything and they are. So right. then they showed me like walking around like with it, like almost like a antenna. Yeah. A giant yeah. antenna. Well, and it's that. So what you're kind of saying, which is it's not. I mean, anyone can do this, let's say, if they're asking for help. But it's to send that, especially when you're just about to fall asleep, all of your, uh, all the sound is down, all of the noise. Right. And the things that will distract you are down. And so you have a better shot at having that, your voice echo across the canyon, so to speak. Oh, okay. And then they also showed me I had something charging. Um, I was making fun of myself. I was charging a charger. <laughs> And I know, and um, there was three little lights to show like if it, you know, at charging or whatever. And I forgot, that's what made me see it more. I knew it was there, but it made me see it more because of that little light. That well, let's there. ask Luana, that image of a charger, is that a metaphor? Are you talking about us all recharging ourselves? Or is that a specific thing related to her visual? I feel like what I'm getting is it's that's a great question because I just assumed it was that and she it was a metaphor that they're charging like it's something that oh. they do while we're sleeping not us necessarily but it's something that they do you know it's so interesting in the in our conversation oh. Jennifer because you'll say something that's a visual and you sort of have an idea of what it might meet mean but then in my mind I think okay she's putting that image in your mind and it could also mean this other thing of they get to charge up with us because we're no longer blocking the information that might come through while we're just about to fall asleep. It's funny because they just show me it's like going to a store when no one's there <laughs> or being, you know, because everybody's asleep. Everybody's, you know, oh, it's just interesting. Right. So, you know, the idea of being other other shoppers. They're all doing something else. Let me ask you another question, though, because I wanted to know, because I felt, especially with what happened with Robert Thurman, for instance, how the day before, I, the peace that I felt that day was beyond what my, what my daughter and I have ever felt. Mm -hmm. And I felt that it had to do with Robert Thurman, somebody coming to visit me before the next day, before we had the interview. Um, so hold on a second. I just wanted to clarify that, too. Thank you for that. I guess they're checking out my essence, not technically not what I'm doing, you know, but they're how, however it works over there, they can um, swing by to check up on you. Yeah. See what's up. Well, if I, maybe if I'm a match to somebody, if, you know, maybe it's an interview that I'm unaware of for myself to like talk to somebody that's here, one of their loved ones. I think it's fascinating because, of course, you and I have had this experience before. Well, I'm having a dream or something a couple of nights before we have a session. Then I ask Luana, you know, what do you want to talk about? And she'll say, well, there was a dream you had, et cetera, et cetera. So, Lou, is there anybody on your VIP list, your clipboard, that wants to come through and chat with us? And right, if you can just put them in the chair, we'll ask them a question. She's showing me you. Um, hold on. I know. She's actually mentioning you talked to somebody three days ago. About what? On the, maybe on the flip side, you talked to somebody okay. on the flip side. So that, I don't know if they're testing you right now. Um, it's not a test, but. No, no, I, no. Here's the thing, because of course, like I say, I'll have a dream. Like it's Charles Broden, somebody like that. All right, but I'm, I'm just saying, I'll have a vivid dream, having a conversation, and then I'm, I'm realizing, oh, I'm having a chat with somebody. I do have somebody in mind who showed up in a dream a couple of nights ago. Okay. Somebody, somebody from our class, Howard Schultz. Okay, Howard would not have gotten that. Howard's my friend uh, that we grew up together in the same block. He became a very successful television producer, passed mm -hmm. away um, some years ago, but we've had a, ongoing conversations with him, and he appears in the film Hacking the Afterlife. 
but he was just sort of showing me um it's kind of like it was an adventure about living in a house somewhere out in the woods and it was like a house that he had designed and right and he said keep going so it was that idea of this yeah. is part of what the process is when you're on the flip side you can create these wonderful places to live and adventures to have and i it, what happened was i had like a distinctive dream of this happened and that happened and i and then as i woke up i realized oh that was howard and i did what we've talked about which is thank him for being in my dream and then we had this conversation which is me saying well what were you trying to show me or what was the point of this unusual exercise right. we did together and he was saying well you create things over here and it's not that we create things only because it's related to our lifetime here. It's kind of just fun to do that. It's kind of like fun to have that kind of an adventure, to hang out with friends of yours. Is that what Howard wanted to come through? Does he want to come and talk to us? Both him and Charles, yeah. All right. So Ch I'm sorry, Howard, but he mentioned Chuck first. So Charles, what what is it you'd like to talk about? No, he said he said Howard could go first. That's funny. Okay. So, that. but Howard, to talk about that a little bit, just about the idea of your oh, your so prolific uh, they television could, producer. They could talk together. That's interesting. Okay, and you okay. were somebody who created a lot of television shows, for and you know, Extreme Makeover stuff like that, where that came up popped out of your head. So the question really is. You know, and we talked about you coming back uh, in the future and working on television shows but but let's just talk about this idea of creating anything you can on the flip side what's the process involved he told me to pay attention <laughs> i was paying attention um that sounds like howard this is kind of funny he makes me sit up straight whatever i'm like didn't he do a naked show too or something yes naked dating and he had me work on it as a writer that's hilarious, by the way. And I said, whatever, whatever you do, don't use my name. <laughs> that was fine. Okay. But right. anyway. Hold on. He says, you guys have discussed at length creation on the other side. He wants to discuss creation in general. Hold on. Okay, over on the flip side then, which creates here. Hold on. It's so interesting. They always do this. They always, it's what you do when you're dreaming. So, I mean, how do you have control over your dreams? I'm just trying to understand. Well, that. it doesn't seem like we do. However, if you allow that we bring a portion of our conscious energy to a life, then it's almost like our higher self could help dictate what kind of dreams we might examine so we can learn something oh my god and it's so simple too it's like whatever you're in alignment with they just showed me your energy so whatever you're in alignment with is what you're going to be able to create they just showed me like a vessel going up to like your higher self like you just said um let me just clarify let me just make sure that that's right um so for instance if you wanted love you have to give it away we've talked about this so many times but now it's coming in a different way if you, whatever it is that you want, the way that you access more of it is by giving it away or by donating. Like for instance, if you, you know, I find out that when I donate work, I get a lot of, I get a lot more clients that pay for work. It yeah. happens on the same day. Well, this came up in a Quora discussion recently and it was this idea of manifesting something. And, and we talked about that because this secret was all about manifesting wealth. But the idea of you don't manifest things that aren't part of that you're in line with you're trying to figure out in your lifetime so the idea of but what you're saying and howard it correct me you're in terms of creating certain things over here try to access your higher self and help help yourself create those things over here is that right yeah he showed me channeling so and I do that for clarification all the time with situations because I don't, I can interpret, but just like you said, you're actually really good at asking questions that I'm not getting, right? Or that yeah. I'm not thinking that could be a possibility. And so it becomes, thank you, it becomes more surreal or more um, 
for me, I feel like it's better when I type or I just type the stream of consciousness. I ask a question and then I just type it out and it's always right. And it always makes me feel better. And then it's gone. You know, now with things that are too close to me, I can't, I don't ask those questions. Like, where's my daughter going to get into college or what college I have to like separate myself, even though it's painful. (sighs) Um, He's like, that's not manifesting. <laughs> Can I manifest? I love, I love that Howard's correcting you. Okay, what he's saying is in ter- Why terms of... You talk to him. You talk huh? to him. <laughs> in ter- I'm just asking, like, in terms of creation, you're talking about creation as a concept. And you're me, and it could be as simple as creating a butterfly, creating life, creating an object, creating an environment. Or over th- says, yeah. And over there, that's what people do. You're over there creating things. Is that correct? Yeah. Like I'm like, is my higher self creating these to happen? And he just showed me Malibu. So that was a created, that was something. So, that- so the invite, the things that come forth for you can be created. And so the question that people would ask was how do I avoid creating things I don't like? Get out of alignment with it. So it's about alignment. He just told me, just take yourself out of, he just took me and just went like that. <laughs> I can even hear him pulling you out of that alignment. All mm-hmm. right. So, Howard, we may come back to this topic in a second, but Chuck Groden, if I could for a minute. Yeah. Uh, I understand that uh, some paper wor- papers of yours were discovered recently. Some very funny letters that you wrote to Warner Brothers about an upcoming performance that you were supposed to do as Hutch Saxony, a singer that you created out of thin air. And I was Hutch Saxony's manager. So how did you manifest those things being found by the people who have found them? He goes, he just rolled his eyes and went like this. He goes, it took a lot of effort <laughs> to find them. So what is that effort, if you don't mind? Putting, he just keeps putting thought bubbles in my head. Or like he'll have an opening where he can put a thought bubble in somebody's head. Or a dream like he did, you know, like he does with you, for instance. He yeah. goes, he goes, believe it or not, it's a lot easier to do it to you in your dream state or when you're, you know, when you're having your coffee in the morning or whatever it is that, or nighttime that you wouldn't have coffee at night. But um, hold on. Why did you show me that? OK, he just. Sh- OK, OK, OK. He just showed me somebody that I know of um, and you actually put a picture of the whole family on Facebook recently. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. And so he just, he showed me Nicholas cage and I'm like, why did you show me that? And then he reminded me about you putting a picture up. Right. Because Luana was very close with the Coppola family. And that's how I ended up spending eight years of Thanksgivings at their house and their home. And so what is it? And then the fact that I ended up going there and reading people. That was in that right, home. but I well, yeah, that's right. They're home in L.A. Luana, yeah. I used to go to their home in, in Napa. No, yeah. but I'm just saying. So Luana, very, very close, and I, I was aware that they were uh, giving Francis that walk, the star on the Walk of Fame this week. Anyway, and of course, I didn't know that. Okay. so of course, Luana, it, it does Luana. Do you want to weigh in about Francis or the family or any of that stuff? You should be right next to him. <laughs> that's funny. Hold on. Oh, my star. It's out in front of Musso and Frank's. I do like going there. So, yeah. Cool. Fun place to go. Interesting. It's another question I have. So, I'm like, who gave, who put that into my head? And I'm like, was it Chuck? I'm looking for Howard, Chuck, one. And he's, they're like, all of us did. So, everybody works as teams over there. That's interesting. Cause last night, for instance, I did a, I did a wine and spirits, which was super fun at the Well and Goods studio um in hermosa beach which i love to do i do it monthly so can i do a little plug sign up yeah please um i do two one spirit events every single month one at hermosa beach's um uncorked uh the wine shop as well as well and good um studio and And people can find that at jennifershaver.com yes you can just scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see all the events and then you can go from there but it's super fun to get a group and so i wondered because they showed that to me again, they yeah. showed it's in pieces. Like, because I've asked them, like, is it a collective that comes in? Because I think I'm talking to one person, but then I get information from another, and they're like, 
we're doing it together. Um, <laughs> I'm like, is it more powerful that way? And again, they're like, yes, but more confusing for you because you hear all of it. <laughs> it's true. I get, you know, I'm like, okay, who is this? It's coming through or whatever. It always works itself out, which reminds me. So Chuck wanted to point out by showing you Nick Cage that it's a team effort to put stuff into your mind, that Correct. they all work on those things. And and Luana, of course, is very connected to that family. That's where I met Nick, actually, when he was a young guy. He used to go up there for Thanksgiving. He's quite a character, funny guy. So the movie that's coming out with him looks great, hilarious. But at Lou, anything, any messages? Let's put it that way. Anything that you want to talk about vis-a-vis -vis Francis or Chuck? Do you have anything related to? Um, or Marlon? You know, people who were in The Godfather 50 years ago? All right, hold on. One of the things that they wanted to say is that nothing can hurt you. A lot of people are fearful of where the information is coming from. Like I used to be when I was, you know, first started, I'm like, how do I know? Yeah. Like, well, it comes, you know, they're not going to give you anything bad that's going to be good for people. <laughs> right. Right. And a lot of people are, are, you know, they think the Bible tells you never listen to people. That's, on the, other the, side. Next, that's the next thing that she showed me, even though the Bible was channeled. Um, Hold on. Don't be afraid. Ask for help. Ask for guidance before you go to sleep. Get in alignment with what you want and what you want to manifest. <laughs> I mean, is it, does that mean it's not good to watch crime shows before you go to sleep? <laughs> well, that would, that would make sense. Or to think about, you know, horrific things that have happened on the planet. It's hard to parse that. I, I do get questions often on Quora about dreams, you know, and somebody last night had a very profound dream where she was with some, a, a president in a previous lifetime, but she had no access to that, no awareness of it, didn't know how that could be, and wondered if it was possible that it was true, what she experienced and witnessed. And I said, well, you know, I don't know, but you can examine that. You can use hypnotherapy. You can use yeah. mediumship. You can use meditation to access how accurate was this dream what what part of it am i supposed to talk about or learn from so after that commercial break we're now back and i think the last uh person we talked to was charles groden he wanted okay. i think he had something to say what what did chuck want to say to us <laughs> he's just telling me i had a very interesting day today um Hey, did you, he's showing me something about Malibu. Did you guys go to Malibu together? You mean like a boat out in the Pacific Ocean? Yeah. All right, well, let's ask him. Chuck, what's that about? What are you trying to reference here? I don't well, know. He showed me 1978. Okay. <laughs> well, you don't know. He might know. Uh, 1978, being on a boat. In something about, about it. Maybe it was a movie that was filmed. I don't know. Oh, okay. That's all possible. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I could look it up. But Chuck, what's the point of what you're trying to say? He's trying to tell me something. Give me a second. The both of us. <laughs> to just do it, which is funny. To just do it. Mm -hmm. Meaning whatever it is have that... Fun. Go have fun. Stop like him and hawing about things. Go have, have, fun. have the adventure that you, you should yeah. have. Right. I found out yes, because I found out one of my girlfriends who I discussed who I talked to, my dear friend Lisa Williams, she can't make it. And so he's just like, still go, go have fun. And I know Oh, I see, I see. Don't hesitate to have fun. Right. Okay. Well, Luana, let's go back to you. Um, you're the person with the list on the flip side. Okay. So now now she just showed me what I was I was shown before. A client, somebody that made an appointment with, well appointment with me who found us on Quora, found me on Quora with you, booked an appointment and she was missing her mom terribly. And I'm like, she, I expressed that I saw a butterfly, not butterflies, but one butterfly. I'm like, uh -huh. does that mean anything to you? And she started bawling. She goes, I wrote down that if my mom was here, she would show you a butterfly. Just oh, lovely. Which was very, very sweet. And then then I had to, then I worked on a net, something else that dealt with the cartel, finding someone, 
missing. And then the client after that were these two lovely ladies. I know, just work with me. These two yeah. lovely ladies who I adore, who, you know, their dads were in spirit. And another big fan of the podcast, but um, one of them, the other one will soon be a big fan of the podcast. But she said that like one of the dads came through and I'm like, he shows me this watch that's broken. And that was one of her things. Well, if my dad's here. She wrote, she had it in her head. Well, if my dad's here. He'll talk about the watch that's broken. And that's Very what he good. did. And then there was just so many things that, you know, that happened today to let them know that they're here. And I know sometimes mediums and you've seen me where I'm like, I don't understand the interpretation or I might yeah. interrupt, but I think the biggest thing is that spirits, you can talk to your dad, you can, you can get messages from them, but you have to believe that you can. You Very good. I mean? Well, let's turn this to Luana for a second, which is, uh, she's putting that in your mind and she's, right. she's pointing out that today you've had a number of these visual verifications of, right. of your spirit or people talking to their loved ones. So Luana, let's, Let's just talk about process for a second. Try to show us or to talk to Jennifer about how, on the flip side, they find that one specific thing and then how do they create it? What's the physical process of manifesting the butterfly in Jennifer's mind? They actually put it, it's funny because um, they actually put it in the client's head to have the client doesn't know that they think they're thinking that right yeah. but they actually give that to the client first you know to think up to think uh, up and to mention it because of course they've yeah. already had that like okay i think i got an idea this will make this you know so verification purposes right i guess then then the next question lou would be in terms of communication and we've talked about this before it's great to have a medium it's great to have to do something like this to have Jennifer's talents and abilities. But the idea is that we all have those abilities to bypass the filters to access. So what's what's a way for people to sort of sit down and meditate on that and, and, and access their don't get don't by not getting frustrated. And they showed me again with names. So like if somebody has a nickname and like I really, you know, if my dad's there, then you know, I'm just using this example, then you know, what's my nickname? I have a couple of them. Yeah. And they'll show me things, but it's not going to be innate. It's not going to be, if everything was spelled out, it'd be a lot easier, but that's just not how it works. They show you different pictures. So I'm like. I well, also you wouldn't have that name in your mind. No. So very I, difficult for you to come to that. Correct. Correct. So be patient. Don't ask questions that you're, you're like, if they're there, don't be how you are to us, <laughs> to mediums. Don't, don't give them a difficult question or something difficult for them to give back to you because it's not how it works. Give them something like, hey, if you're around, show me a sign. What should the sign be? And then they'll give you a sign. It might be numbers. It might be a butterfly. It might be something, but don't think it's a literal thing either. So for instance, the butterfly, you might not see a butterfly, but a but you might walk into a place where a, butter, a big butterfly is on a vase or something. Yeah, That is them putting your awareness towards that butterfly. It might not be a real butterfly though. Right. And reminding you of that right. this is our bat signal, that that kind of a thing right. that we can, uh, right. so that we can access. All right, Lou, let's, just because we have you and, you know, stuff's going on on the planet. It's so serious, uh, you know, and people losing their loved ones and war happening. And I just want to touch base with a couple of people who are in our class. Uh, it was six years ago that uh, Gary Shandling uh, checked out the comedian. And let me just quickly ask him: Are you what's going on with your golf game? How's that going? He's made it to the second hole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, if you don't mind, just explain how do you create a golf course on the flip side that you can play? He says, "Think of an atlas, but then think of." 20 atlases this high, like the, the or not Alice, like the, sh the well. Yeah, map. You mean like a map, like a. Like a map. But you know that that transparent blue map that they use for um, architects use? Yeah, yeah. And doctors imagine, use it. So, yeah. Imagine 20 of them. 
Uh And imagine, you know, (laughs) mile long of them. Like he's saying, (laughs) it's very challenging to make a hole in one, especially if it goes across the States, across, you know, across Europe. And then your hole in one is like at the Disney place, the Disney tower in Tokyo. He goes, that takes a lot of planning (laughs) to have it, you know, it's like the continuous golf game. So if I may, the planning is related to time measurement. Uh, it would have to do with like the distance, air, right. all that stuff in your mind's eye to create all of that, as opposed to creating a hole in one like a two feet away from where you're playing from. Right, because that's so easy. Because that's not. That's not fun. Well, we talked to Carl Lemley briefly, uh, who showed up of uh, the guy who created Universal Studios, and he said that when we get bored of creating and constructing imaginary places to visit, whatever, that when we get bored with that, we decide to return to Earth, that we'd decide to come back to have pizza and cappuccino. That's interesting. So what's your opinion about that, Gary? He's making me feel the taste. He's, he says that, um, he's like, be careful what you wish for over here. You'll get it. <laughs> so like what? you'll get whatever frequency it is to like, to have that cappuccino, you'll search it out to have the best cappuccino. So whatever, you know, um, mathematical equation that needs to have, you know, or Venn diagram or whatever it is that you need to have that perfect cappuccino, it's given to you like that in an instant. It helps you if you remember what that feeling is like, that will make it quicker, he says. All right, round robin. I got a question from Marilyn Monroe, somebody we've met and seen in our class before. There's a new article in Vanity Fair about her last day on Earth. I know Jennifer hasn't seen it. I just happened to read it. My question to you, Marilyn, is this is that story accurate? She was, not... already, she was already going like this, but let me. That's on. okay. There was underlying truths truths throughout it, but overall. It was accurate in what they wanted to convey. So I don't know if it was the sadness. I don't know if it was. Well, it's a detail. It's like, it's a detail. It's like a timeline. This happened, that happened. This person came to see her. Uh, that person, somebody else in our class apparently came yeah. to see her. JFK. Uh, actually, his brother. Right. Yeah. I just was. Sorry, I know you were filling in. But that that's an unknown. No, thing. but that's what she just showed me. Oh, okay, so that's an unknown thing, and that is in the article. Wow. So I guess the question is that was something we said that Robert did come forward, and, but here's the interesting thing from that article: he came forward and said to us that he wanted us to pass along messages to his family to investigate this, to investigate what really happened, and we've talked about that. And but my question to him is: what I'm realizing that the if people do that, then it'll not reflect well on him, on his journey and his life. But is but that also comes along with the truth sets everyone free, which we heard from Mary Todd Lincoln a week later, complaining that I had said, you know, that's ancient history. Why dig into it? And he says but, it heals everybody from both sides. So it heals everybody from both sides. So you you let's just say you approve of people digging into something about you, even if it reflects badly on your his, history and your journey. That's my question. Yeah, he said, okay, hold on. It needs to be set straight because that's what that's what needs to be hap- that that's what needs to happen on both sides. That's country. what needs to happen on both sides, that the truth sets everyone free on both yeah. sides. Whether it's negative or positive, it doesn't matter. That point in is... In life, I'm already gone. Right. That because well, and they're... Better because they already have to do better the next time. That's not... What it does, though, is it all... Everybody that's held on to certain beliefs, once it's set... He's like, you can, <laughs> you can only imagine the fake news, and it can only last for so long before it dissipates. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. So, okay. I mean, look, I'm not going to get. He just showed me like fake news literally dissipating, like the whole, the term. Like, yeah. Just, uh, just dissipating. Falling apart. I won't go into details about what it's about. I just happened to read this article prior to uh, coming back to our podcast. 
but listen, the point is to examine things from both sides of a coin, whether it's good or bad. And you can access people on the flip side to ask them about their opinion about what happened or for them to show you some truth about what happened, no matter what it is. Yeah. And we've, we've done that before. We've asked the Alpha and the Omega to come forward and talk about his life, his journey. Mm -hmm. We've had Jesus come forward and correct the record. And people, you know, it drives people crazy when we do that. But the whole point is to show that they can come forward. And we can, at, you can ask them questions on your own. Yes. And just what we were talking about, well, same thing Luana was saying, like allow them to manifest the answer in your mind. It could be a visual. It doesn't have to be what you think it's going to be. Try not to judge the answer. Don't judge it. I tell that to everyone. Don't judge it. Like Very good. And so, Lou, anybody else that needs to come forward and talk to us today? Dick Clark? <laughs> of course. Why not? You know, I have been quoting him as lately. You what? don't know that. I, you don't know that. But but I quoted him, I think, yesterday. And it was this idea because I we asked him when he came forward, <laughs> unbeknownst of us knowing why he was here, I said, what do you miss about being on the planet? And he said, I miss the mystery. And we both said, what does that mean? And he said, on this side of the veil, you, you fall in love with somebody a little at a time. Over on that side, it's instantaneous where you get a download of all their information. What would you like to observe, Dick Clark? He says, he didn't like the quote that you used yesterday as much as the one before. <laughs> so but, what, go ahead what what would you like to say though what that's interesting he says that we surprised him so we don't so the other side i guess we still surprise the other side they don't have to know it's something they can have access to what's happening to us but it's not something that um like they're not completely aware of everything we're doing and we sort no. of so no. they continue to learn from us again and that's it shows me like what the essence is they look at our essence they don't notice or the day-to-day -day, but they look at our essence and they they gravitate towards that like what is our true you know what are our true intentions so so dick you're saying that you still learn from people loved ones that you had on the planet and they're still teaching you lessons or he says he's learning from Ryan Seacrest all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Now, have you ever appeared to Ryan in a dream or anything like that? Several times. And does is he believe that it's you or or does he just let it go? He, does. he just doesn't talk about it, but he does. There was one in particular that he couldn't, he was going to sign a contract or something. I feel like he told him not to do it. And then it didn't happen or something like that. So he listened, he listened to the advice. From Dick Clark on the flip side. Well, that, something else happened that that made it um, more tangible, like the next day. But it started from him. Wow, that's really cool. Well, Dick, anything else you want to say? I mean, you're in the hot seat. Luana let you in. What do you want to tell us? <laughs> Dance the night away. Dance the night away. You know, we we heard this from somebody. On the flip, I don't remember who, but it was that no one ever comes to the flip side and wishes they had done less. Right. And no one has ever said to me, hey, I wish I would have worked more. <laughs> yeah. So that idea of do as much as you can, have as much that. fun. You're, you create memories when you're doing things. You When you're idle or sitting still, you're not necessarily creating memories. So get out of your comfort zone. Go do the things that su will surprise you. Go do the things that make your soul feel better. Like when music is so intricate, like it's music is so intricate in the way that our thought process happens, what we associate timelines with. If you think about it, because the Beatles, what, what, you know, what do we associate the Beatles with? We associate the Beatles with the six. I do. Yeah. You know, and then Nirvana, the grunge era. And then like there's so there's so not only does the music. So the music carries the memory of the that time period and that frequency of who you right. were when you first heard it. 
And right. so by playing those songs and re, re, revisiting, well, Dick Clark's a perfect person to talk about that because he met everybody in the music world. He just showed me your the your book because he showed me he just showed me the wings. Your book. Tuning into the afterlife, I uh, Dick. Given, you're, I think you're in there, Dick. I have given sure that are. so many times. <laughs> Well, it's what a weird way to do a plug, you know, for me. Like Dick Clark says, you know, tune into the afterlife and check out the book. I think that's a fascinating idea. And uh, I plan on making a CD, actually, called Tuning into the Afterlife, some music from the flip side. Awesome. And, and we'll see what that turns what into. An, what about an eight track? <laughs> that would be good. Because cassettes are back. When eight tracks are going to be back anytime soon. Listen, I know we don't have this very long, Jennifer. Is that it? Is that That's it? Is it. that the the clap of we got to get out of here? We love you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Luana. Thanks, your dad, Jim. Uh, thanks, uh, the Coppola family. Somebody came by to visit us or talk about. and Or it might have been just uh, Charles Grodin. As well as everybody else. Um, the point of our podcast is to remind people that your loved ones are not that far away. And if you take uh, the time, they do want to communicate and continue to give you some guidance. Yes. We uh, love you. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschaefer.com, martinizone.com or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.